from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Dell Technologies World Digital Experience. Brought to you by Dell Technologies. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with the Cube. Welcome back to our ongoing coverage of Dell Technology World 2020, the digital experience, uh, not in person, like nothing uh, this year, 2020, but the digital experience allows to do a lot of things that you couldn't do in person. And uh, we're excited to have our next guest. He is Deepak uh, Prasad, the Director of Product Management for Dell Technologies Cloud. Deepak, great to see you. Hello, Jeff. Nice to meet you as well. You too. So let's let's back up like ten thousand square feet because you know cloud came in uh, with a big giant rage. Uh, uh, I guess it's been a while now with AWS and public cloud, mm -hmm. and people were putting their dev tests on there. And you know we've seen this explosion of public cloud, and then we have hybrid cloud and multi cloud, and then you know basically people figured out that not everything can go to a public cloud. A lot of stuff uh, shouldn't. Some stuff's got to stay in data centers for all different reasons, mm -hmm. but basically it's horses for courses. So we're a little ways into this. How are you guys at Dell really thinking about cloud and helping your customers think about what cloud is beyond, you know, kind of the hype? Well, that's a great question, Jeff. At Dell, we think of cloud really as an operating model and as an operating experience rather than a destination. So it's interesting that you bring up public cloud and private cloud, but we take a step back and think of what does that experience really represent. So if you think of, uh, uh, you know, what defines that cloud operating model, it's a democratization of technology, access of resources through APIs, through self-service portals, ability to pay as you go in a very simplified commerce experience, and the agility of cloud, you know, the promise of instant availability, infinite scalability. Now, if, if you look at, uh, you know, the landscape around us, until now, that has only been delivered in a consistent way by public cloud vendors, which leads people to believe that really cloud is a destination, not an operating model. But we think that we are capable of bringing those experiences, those tenets of the cloud operating model to the on-premises experience, and really taking location out of the conversation. So this really allows our customers to focus more on their workloads, the innovations they want to drive, and then they can fit their uh, requirements, their application requirements to the location where those resources are, regardless of having to worry about if this is public or private, they will get the same operating experience. They'll get the same scalability, the same simplified commerce, the same access to, to, uh, to resources. Right. Well, let's talk about some of the, some of those things because, as you said, there's a lot of behaviors that are involved in cloud and cloud operating. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the behaviors that I think gave the public cloud a, an early leg up was just simply provisioning. Right. Simply, if somebody needs some capacity, they need some horsepower. Again, traditionally, it would be test dev in the early days. You know, they didn't have to provision. They didn't have to put in an order with IT and wait for so long to get a box uh, assigned to them or purchased or whatever, right? They just swipe the credit card and went. How have you kind of helped people uh, have that kind of ease of use, ease of, uh, I don't know, ease of spin up, ease of creation, I don't know what the right mm -hmm. verb is. Um, because I think that's a really core piece of what enabled early cloud adoption. No, absolutely, you're, you're spot on. And that was a big part of it, that if somebody needed resources, instead of waiting for weeks and and months, they could go uh, and, and sign up for those resources and get almost instantaneous access. And we believe that what we're doing in this area is really transforming the business. Today, we can deliver resources to customers in their data center in 14 days, and really are aggressively looking to cut that down further. So what this really means is not just shipping uh, resources in 14 days, but actually delivering a cloud experience in a customer's data center or a colo location, whatever a, you know, location of their choice in 14 days and making that available to the customers, not just through the traditional procurement process, but we're actually uh, very proud to announce the cloud council, the Dell Technologies Cloud Council through which customers can in a self-service way order those, order those resources and have it show up and be operational in their environment in 14 days. So we're really bringing that speed of cloud to the on-premise experience. 
Right. So how do, how does it actually work? Do you pre do you pre ship some amount of capacity beyond what you believe is currently needed, just to kind of forward queue you will if you will capacity? How does it work from from both the implementation strategy in terms of the actual compute and store and capacity, as well as on kind of the purchasing piece? Because those are two kind of very yeah. different workflows. No, uh, uh, that's a, that's a good question. So for us. Our strengths are really in supply chain management that, that allows us to build capabilities across the world in areas from where we can ship to customers almost on an on-demand basis. So as soon as we get an order that the customer needs a, a private, cl private cloud deployment in a certain location, we're able to mobilize those resources from those locations and have it instantiated in the customer's environment. So right. it's really uh, built on our strengths of over the years of, of uh, optimizing supply chain, if you will, and just bring, taking that to the next level. Okay. So we so don't uh, stay in the customer sorry. environment. Yeah, no problem. I was going to say the, another great characteristics of cloud, right, is, is spinning up, which we hear about all the time versus spinning down and right. The easiest example is always used if you're running, you know, some promotion, if you're pizza hut, you're running a promotion for the Super Bowl. Obviously, right, your demand for that thing is going to be huge. You want to spin up to be able to take advantage of all the people cashing their coupon. And then when the Super Bowl's over, you want to spin those resources down because you're not going to necessarily need that capacity. How do you guys accomplish that type of flexibility in your solution? So in our subscription model, we have uh, different ways to address customer environments. So we allow customers to start very small and then, and then grow the subscription as their requirements grow. And the key thing of our subscription, which is really unique, is the ability to, to co-terminate. So for example, if a, if a customer started off on a three-year subscription with the uh, resources for say 100 virtual machines, and somewhere along the way, they needed to add resources for 50 more virtual machines. So they will pay for the 150 virtual machines, but that extra 50 virtual machines does not create an orphan or a child subscription. At the end of three years, everything terminates Together, so it really gives them flexibility with you know ability to start small and not have to worry about vendor lock-in. And now we started off with a sort of uh, a reserved instance type of uh, subscription model, but we're definitely bringing usage-based models as well, which allows more even more flexibility with respect to spinning up and spinning down. Right. And then what are some of the real specific reasons that people go for this type of uh, solution versus a public cloud? What are some of the real inherent advantages of doing this within my own infrastructure, my own data center, my own, you know, kind of virtual four walls, if you will? Yeah, uh, you know, we strongly believe that the decision should really be guided by workload requirements. There's certain workloads that work really well in an on-premises environment, for example, you can take virtual desktop environments, VDI. Uh, that works really well uh, from a performance standpoint in, in an on-premise environment versus a public cloud environment. Similarly, there are other workloads. We're not public cloud deniers that, that are best suited for public cloud, but it's really, it should be something that's, that comes from understanding your application, understanding the latency requirements, understanding the data requirements for those uh, applications, you know, what are your egress uh, uh, issues or, or, you know, uh, the profile of the workload that you're trying to implement, that should really be the driving force in where the workload is placed. And then uh, tell us a little bit about the partnership with VMware, because that's a huge asset that you have, you know, now, you know, basically side by side and you can leverage the technology as well as, as a lot of the assets that are in VMware. How has that changed the way you guys have taken the Dell Cloud Platform to market? It, it really is a, a differentiating factor for us from a technology standpoint. It allows us to bring the best of both worlds, best of, of the hardware infrastructure, as well as best of the cloud stack, the cloud software infrastructure together in one cohesive and, and well-developed package. So, uh, the Dell Technologies Cloud Platform, from a technology standpoint, is implemented with uh, our VxRail appliances, which is a, a hyperconverged infrastructure, as well as a VMware Cloud Foundation from a software standpoint. Now, the code developed in, and, and, and jointly engineered capabilities allow for a unique, cap uh, unique feature of VMware Cloud Foundation where it can do lifecycle management of the entire stack 
both the hardware and the software from a single interface. So it understands VxRails, it understands the different uh, firmware levels and, and VxRail manager software versions, et cetera. And then it would automatically select what is the best and, and well-tested and supported software bundle that could be deployed without causing you know, typical issues with version mismatches and trying to chase down different hardware compatibility matrices, et cetera, all of those are eliminated. So it's an integrated lifecycle management experience. That's great. Now, what are, are, sorry. I'm sorry. I have a little bit, a little bit of a lag here. So I, uh, I apologize. I was just going to say, you've been at this for a while. You're in prod, uh, you know, product management. So you're really thinking about speeds and feeds and you're thinking about roadmap and features. I wonder if you can share your perspective on this evolution from kind of this race to, to pure public cloud to this, this big discussion, I think um, we had Pat Gelsinger talking about a hybrid cloud back at VMware 2013. So then, you know, kind of this hybrid cloud and multi-cloud and, and really kind of this maturation of this space as, we, as we've progressed for a while now, probably 10 years. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, majority of our customers live in a multi-cloud world. They have uh, resources that they consume from one or more multi, uh, hyper, sorry, uh, public cloud vendors, and they have one or more on-premise vendors as well for their resources. And managing that complex environment across multiple providers with different skill set, different tools, different SLAs, while it sounds really interesting to you know have workload uh, drive your your deployment and put pl put place the workloads where they are best suited. It does prevent. It does present a challenge of managing a complex and 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 getting even more complex by the day, multi-cloud environment. And that's where we think we have an advantage, um, uh, based on some of the work that we're doing with the Dell Technologies Cloud Console, to bring a, a true multi-cloud experience to our customers. Not one of the benefits of not being a you know a, a public cloud provider is that we are agnostic to all public cloud providers. We are fully accepting that certain workloads need to live in those environments. And through our cloud console, we will make it easy for customers to manage not only their on-premises assets and on-premises cloud resources, but also uh, cloud resources that reside in multiple public cloud vendors. That's good. Yeah, because it helps, right? Because they've got stuff everywhere. It's like there, you know, there is no Dell technology, yeah. right? There's a lot of there's a lot of people that work yeah. there. There's a lot of projects. There's a lot of, you know, kind of pieces to that puzzle. Yeah. I wonder too if you could share your perspective on kind of application modernization, right? Th that's always another big, you know, kind of topic. Should you should you take those old legacy apps and could you, should you try to rebuild them in a more cloud native way using containers and and all this flexibility and deploy them? Or, you know, which one should you just leave alone, right? They're running fine. They've been running fine for a while. They've got some basic core functionality that maybe you do, do or don't uh, need to, to kind of modernize, if you will. And maybe those resources should be spent on building, you know, new applications and new kind of areas of competitive differentiation. When you're working with your clients, how do you tell them to think about app modernization? Yeah, we look at it from a business requirement standpoint of how uh, and what end goals are customers trying to achieve through that application. And in some cases, you know, uh, and you covered the spectrum right there. Some cases, modernization just means swapping out the hardware and putting, it, putting that application on a more modern, more powerful hardware. At the other end, it's, it's uh, you know, going to a SaaS model of, uh, you know, everything uh, available through a, through a cloud application. And in between those two extremities, there's you know, virtualization, there's refactoring, there's containerization and microservices-based implementation. But it comes down to understanding what that application is meant to deliver, for who, and what business requirements and business objectives it, it fulfills. And that's how we use as a, as a guiding principle on how to position application modernization to customers. All right, that's super helpful, because I'm sure that's a big topic and you know, there's probably certain apps that you just should not, you just shouldn't touch, right? You should probably just right. leave them That's alone. They're running just fine. Let them do their thing. All right. Yeah. But before I, I'm sorry. Good. No, is this interesting? I was in a conversation with the customer just earlier today where they have a portion of their infrastructure, of some applications that they absolutely wanted to leave alone and, and, uh, and just change out the underlying hardware, but there are other applications where they really want to adopt uh, containerization and 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 refactor those rewrite those applications so that 
they can have more scalability and more flexibility around that. So it really is, is uh, determined by the needs. Yeah. Um, so last question, Dell Tech World this year uh, was a digital experience like all the other shows that we've seen here in 2020. Just, But it's a huge event, right? A big, big show. And uh, we're excited to be back. Uh, to cover it again, but I'm curious if there's some special announcements within such a big show. Sometimes things get lost a little bit here and there, but any special announcements you want to make sure that get highlighted yeah. that people may have missed within this kind of sea of content over the last several days? Two, two major things that, that I'm very excited to share with you. One is Dell Technologies Cloud Platform. We are actually discussing and, and talking about Dell Technologies Cloud Platform in the concept of instant capacity blocks. So in the past, we talked about it with respect to nodes, uh, you know, a Dell technology cloud platform, you can have, uh, you know, so many nodes in it to power your, your on-premises cloud resources, but really have changed the conversation and look into how cloud customers are consuming those resources. And we really want to drive focus to that and introduce the concept of instance capacity blocks. Instances are, think of it as a workload profile, you know, uh, CPU and, and memory put together, and then uh, in different combinations in a predefined way to address different workload needs. So this really changes the conversation for our customers that they don't have to worry about designing or, or specking out the hardware platforms, but really understand how many resources they need, how, many, how much uh, you know, processing power, how much memory, how much storage they need. And they define their requirements to us in those terms and we will deliver those instance capacity blocks to them in their data center. So behind the scenes, it's built by best in class, uh, you know, hardware from uh, VX Rails and best in class software from VMware, but it's really delivered in terms of instant capacity blocks. The second uh, interesting thing that I want to share with you and I've prefetched it a few times is Dell Technologies Cloud Console. We're building this single pane of glass to manage our customers' entire journey from on-premises to multi-cloud, hybrid cloud with consistency of, of uh, how you can discover services, how you can order services, and how you can grow your and manage your footprint. So those are Very a couple good. things from a Dell technology standpoint that we're really excited to share with people. Well, congratulations. I know you've been busting your tail for, uh, for quite a while on these types of projects, and it's nice to be able to finally release them out to the world. Well, it's, it's my pleasure. All right. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for stopping by. Again, congratulations. And uh, we'll uh, continue the ongoing coverage of Dell Technology World 2020, the digital experience. I'm Jeff Frick. He's Deepak Prasad. You're watching theCUBE. See you next time. Thanks for watching.